question, we're going to be finding the rate of change from a graph, and the two types of problems you should be able to work by the end of this video are listed below. So what is rate of change? Rate of change is just the rate change in y divided by the change in x on the graph, and we'll take a look at what that means here in a second. Keynote is that you must include your units and your answers, such as feet per second or dollars per deposit or milliliters per degree Celsius. Also note that rate of change of the graph of a line is the exact same as the slope of a graph of a line. So here's our first example. We're going to find the rate of change and... So the situation says the savings account balance can be modeled by the graph of a linear function shown on the grid. What is the rate of change? So that's going to be our first most important word, rate of change of the balance with respect to the number of deposits. So if you look at it, the balance is along the y-axis, y. The number of deposits is along the x-axis, our x. And our rate of change is the change in y divided by the change in x. So all we have to do is find a couple points. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight those. Let's do it in red. Maybe that'll show up a little bit better. So let's highlight a couple points. And we're going to find out what the change in the balance, or the y value, is between those two points, between 0 and 1. So if you look at it from 50 to 150, it goes up by 100. So it's going to be 100 divided by, that's the change in y, divided by the number of deposits, our x value. And notice that our x went up by 1 between those two points, so that's plus 1. So 100 over 1 means that our rate of change is $100 per deposit. You could also let the word per guide you. 100 per, per means divide by deposit. So that means for every deposit you should be going up $100. And if you look at it, every deposit it is $100. One deposit, $100. One deposit, $100 every single time. Let's take a look at another example. This example you look at it, we're going to end up with some fractions, and it's not going to be quite as straightforward. I'd like you to try to read the problem, pause the video, and see if you can come up with the answer on your own. So it tells us the graph shows the volume of gas as the temperature changes. So it's volume changing and temperature changing, and we can see that on the x and y axis. It says, which of these best represents the rate of change in the volume with respect to the temperature? Notice the volume is along our y-axis, the temperature is along our x-axis, and rate of change is going to be the change in y divided by the change in x. So all we have to do is find a couple points on the graph, and I'm going to do my very best to pick a whole number value because I don't want to really deal with decimals on the graph. It's not too precise. So I'm going to follow this along the graph, the little line here. I'm going to follow it along until it passes through the corner of a grid. It almost passes through a corner right here, but not exactly. So I need to keep on going. And it looks like it exactly passes through a point right there. It's going to get us close enough. So I'm going to follow it up. Remember, I have to find two points. Keep on following. And it's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like it passes through a point right here as well. And if it's not exact, it should get us close enough. So let's see what the change in y between those two points is. Notice we went up two little blocks. Let's find out what our scale is. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We're counting by ones on the y-axis, so it went up by two. So our change in y is two over our change in x. Our change in x values between those two points Looks like we're counting, let's see how much we're counting by. So 1, 2, 3, 4, so from 20 to 40, looks like we're counting by 5. So that would be 25, 30, 35, 40. So every little block is 5. So we're counting by 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Looks like we did 25 for our change in x. Because it was 5 blocks and each block was worth 5. So 2 over 25. Uh, let's see what that is. 2 over 25, we can do that in our calculator. Get your calculator out, and you can do 2 
divided by 25. So in your calculator, you got 2 divided by 25. You can press Enter, and it looks like it's 0 0.08. Now again, I guesstimated as best I could on the graph. I got 0 0.08. Let's see if these any, any of these answers gets us really close to 0 0.08. 7 over 100. Press Enter. That's 0 0.07. That's really close. 1 divided by 12. That's 0 0.083. Oh dear, they're both really close. 12 is going to be way too big, and so is 22 and 2 fifths. So and you know it has to be 7 over 100 or 1 over 12. 1 over 12 is closer to the actual answer, or the answer we got, so B looks like it's going to be correct. However, I'm not 100% convinced, so let's go ahead and see if we can't find some more points that match a little bit better. Notice, remember when I was doing the problem, I was like, well, it doesn't pass through exactly the point, but kind of. Let's see if we can find a couple places where it passes exactly through the corner. Well, it passes exactly through the corner right here. And maybe I just picked a couple points that weren't perfect enough. Is there any other place? Oh, looks like it's exactly right here. Maybe this will give us a closer answer and show us whether or not that answer I picked is indeed the correct one. So we're counting by ones. One, two, three, four, five. Counting along by ones along the y-axis. So that's five. Let's see our x-axis. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60. 60. Let's try that. Five over 60. Five over 60. 0 0.0833. Well, there you go. The answer is indeed B.